This might be the most insane looking setup ever. <sighs> Welcome back to my garage. Last time you saw me traveling to Denmark and visiting the Roltrex factory and building this nice little unit, which is going to replace my roots blower on my home built 50cc supercharged two stroke engine. You also saw me gathering a bunch of parts and today we start the journey to having this mounted on the engine and working. Up until now I've been running a draw through setup that won't work with the new supercharger. It has a special seal there that doesn't like getting fuel into it. And I think having a restriction like a carb slide can cause bad surge in that uh, centrifugal compressor. As I've been running draw through, I have run this carb gravity fed. It's a special speedway carb without a float bowl. Only one circuit and that's fed directly from the tank up here. I need to add in a high pressure pump and a pressure regulator to bring down the pressure to normal carb pressure again. And then with this uh, boost reference it can uh, follow the boost pressure and uh, so it won't run lean. Fuel won't be pushed back into the tank. We might experiment with different carbs. I've got something on the way. But first we'll try with the uh, Speedway carb. First thing on the agenda is seeing how much fuel is delivered to the carb now. What kind of pressure we're seeing and what kind of flow rate we're seeing. Try to match it with this uh, pressure regulator. I'm gonna drain the system of uh, methanol and nitromethane. And then I'm gonna use some, uh, some diesel fuel instead for the measurements. I'm gonna hook the fuel valve with the main jet back into the valve. I'm gonna start my timer at this mark, stop at that mark. Do that a couple of times, take the average. That'll be our base measurement, which we will need to match with our fuel pressure regulator. There. Like that. I'll do this three times and take the average. Four measurements, three are really close, one is a bit off, I'll explain that in a second. We're hovering around 1 minute 37 seconds, I'll use that as the baseline. The one reading which was 10 seconds more was when I didn't open the valve and prime this reservoir before I opened this valve. This little surge tank makes a difference with this long a fuel hose and in a gravity fed setup. Let's get that pump and regulator going and see if we can match these numbers. Here's a high pressure pump and filter setup I've already got from playing with the constant load, constant flow in ejection setup earlier. We'll use this in conjunction with this EFI fuel pressure down to carburetor fuel pressure, pressure regulator. Ready for some testing, I've replaced the diesel with some gasoline plus uh, two-stroke oil. I don't think the gravity is that much different that this will give us uh, bad readings. The Deutschwerk pump specifies it's not supposed to run diesel. Also says it's not meant to run methanol. Can run ethanol though. I'm gonna use it for methanol and uh, purge it. How easy is it finding a methanol rated electric fuel pump? This is my return. Now let's give it some power and see if the pump works. And as soon as I see fuel here, I'll put this into the main tank. I'm not sure if the pump is supposed to sound like this. Let's check the pressure out of the regulator. We're seeing uh, like almost 3 psi. This is with atmospheric pressure to the regulator. Now I'm gonna use this pump and see how it behaves when I give it some uh, boost. Should be a linear rise. And that's not what's happening. Let's see if bringing the base pressure higher helps. Pretty much at maximum now. I'm starting to think my uh, high pressure pump is not working. I think the pump is dying. We need to get another one. I can't see any pressure. Even if I pinch the return line, there's uh, not much pressure to speak of. Like half a bar.
Let's see what happens if I cap if I pinch this line. I'm starting to think this can be a problematic setup without that float bow. There's an insane amount of fuel coming through here now. We can probably get close to the same pressure as with the gravity feed, but we'll get far higher flow than with it, probably. We'll have to test that tonight. I need to go pick up the kids in kindergarten. It's in the evening. I'm a bit behind schedule this week because I had to take my girlfriend to the hospital Monday and I had to pick her up today. And I had to take care of all the picking up kids here, driving kids there, stuff alone, which we usually share. No need to worry, it's nothing serious. Nonetheless, it did eat up most of Monday and Tuesday today. Anyways, yet again, I'm an idiot. Of course, we can't regulate pressure here if there's no restriction. We're in the middle of a thunderstorm, crossing fingers the electricity won't go out. There's no way for this pressure regulator to regulate pressure if there's no restriction. All it does is flow as much as it can until it reaches the set pressure point. Then it routes the extra flow to the return line and back to the tank. Let's pinch the line, set a base pressure and see how it reacts to boost input. Then we'll add that valve with a main jet back in. We'll probably have to go quite a bit down on the main jet to reach the same numbers as uh, the gravity feed system. Looks like 6 psi, that's the lowest we can go. Just above 6 psi, and I'll add in 5 psi. That's 5 psi, between 10 and 11. Let's try 10 psi. Ten should bring us to about 16, which uh, is right on the gauge. Now I'll add in the restriction, which is our uh, main jet holder, 210 main jets. It's holding about six psi. Let's see if I add add in five psi here. And it's sitting at almost 10. Seems to be working. I'll hook up the flow test tank again and see how fast it takes to fill up between the lines here. One minute and 14 seconds. We're actually really close. We'll replace the 150 jet sitting in there now with this 110 jet. I'll abort the test there because uh, it's obviously too slow. I'll look through my boxes and see if I can find any jets larger than 110 but smaller than 150. As luck would have it, I found a 125 which just might be exactly what we need. I'm wondering if I'm killing my battery. I'll have to abort the test and uh, check the voltage of the battery. 12.5 volts. That's too low. Draws a lot of amps, that pump. One minute and almost 33 seconds. I'll call that close enough. It's probably within margin of error for this measuring method. Remember that one time I went to Copenhagen to visit road tracks? I arrived a day early, might have had a couple of drinks too much, might have been really punished the day after. For my next trip I have a new better game plan. Book my flights as I always do, log into NordVPN, pick a country with low salaries. Malaysia is a great go-to country for that. Connect to a server in that country to pretend to be from there. Open an incognito tab, search for flights. A bunch of options to choose from. And you'll probably get cheaper prices doing it this way versus ordering from your high income country. After flying down and arriving in the country I'm visiting, I'm not gonna go for my usual go-to option. Balls to the wall, drinks all night, extreme hangover the day after. Going the less traveled route. Have a few drinks, back at the hotel at 9. Maybe I'll brew up some coffee, back into NordVPN, connect back up with a server in Norway. Enjoy some Netflix shows available at home, but maybe not where I'm traveling to. If I'm feeling adventurous, connect to a server in a completely different country. Canada. Logging back into Netflix, and now there's a bunch of different shows available. Awesome. NordVPN also keeps me secure by creating an encrypted tunnel for my data to travel in. Especially useful when you're staying in a hotel using their public Wi-Fi. There's multiple packs to choose from. Standard, NordVPN only. Plus, NordVPN and NordPass. Complete, NordVPN, NordPass and NordLocker. And a four-month bonus on 
on all packs and products. Head to nordvpn.com slash two-stroke stuffing and get four months free on a two-year subscription. Risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you NordVPN. I think this might work. Now remember, we're running a float bowl less carb, which means as soon as the engine is stopped, the fuel valve has to be shut off, otherwise it'll flood. You might have noticed me rushing to the carb, turning that valve every time I'm done with a dyno session. That's why. Would be neat if that happened automatically though. If there's no ignition going on, no fuel flow. That's what this uh, solenoid valve is for. Well, probably not this one. This is the only thing I could find locally. Depending on what kind of plastic it is, it might actually work for a uh, for the methanol and nitromethane. We'll leave that overnight and uh, tomorrow we'll see, see how the plastic has reacted with the fuel. The results are in. Seems to be unchanged in uh, every way. Same thing for this uh, plastic plunger with the rubber seal. Held up fine it seems. So has that uh, plungy bit. This uh, nipple fitting thing has not survived. Would probably dissolve if uh, kept in there for longer. Supposed to look like this. This means it's probably fine using this water solenoid for this fuel if we replace these with uh, brass fittings or something. I've been having some second thoughts on using this floatless speedway carb with this setup. My fear is lack of accuracy and stability and responsiveness. I'm not sure the regulator will be responsive and accurate enough for what we wanted to do here. Might have a solution though. First a huge thanks to Mike Dunbar for sending me this carb. And not only the carb but also a silicon fitting. This velocity stack thing. A huge filter to fit that stack. A little carb fuel pump, some nitrous oxide jets, pills as they call them, some tubing for uh, the nitrous oxide setup, and this coffee, Tim Hortons. Looking forward to replacing my normal shitty coffee with this stuff. I'm known to run ridiculously sized carburetors on 50cc engines, like this 32mm PWK carb. This is different though. Running this would actually fulfill a dream of mine. Larger carb throat than piston. I don't think that would work very well, but I have a plan. Electron carbs have this bulge on their slide facing the intake. That's where the needle is uh, situated. The needle is sitting in front of the main slide. I can make an oval shaped Venturi here and bring the carb down to like 32 millimeters or so. I can do the same thing here where the power jets are situated. It'll be a twin Venturi carb. The reason I want to put myself through all the trouble of making an oval insert venturi thing for this carb versus running something like this which is more suitably sized. 48 millimeters by the way. Large carb like this is designed to deliver much more fuel than a smaller carb like this and it has a much larger float bowl and it has much more mass. The larger mass means it will probably be more tolerant to high frequency relatively high frequency vibrations from the engine, keeping the fuel from frothing in the bowl. The larger fuel bowl means there's a much larger buffer for fuel delivery and it'll just look insanely awesome with a 48 millimeter carb on a 50 cc engine. Almost the same. <laughs> should have been a 50. Should have been a 50 millimeter carb. I'm gonna take all those bowl vent lines and reference them to a pitot tube in front of the carb. The bowl will be referenced to dynamic pressure. It will feel the force of the air coming in and also the static pressure. Should mean we won't require as ridiculous jetting as without said tube. We're gonna start working on this but first I've got another part I need to machine.
That pulley will be replaced by this pulley. Well, this might be the most insane looking setup ever. Another benefit of running such a large carb is that even though I'm tilting it like this, there's still lots of fuel in the bowl. The compressor outlet can be rotated. It wouldn't work in this position. I'll rotate it to point more towards the front and then curve back into the carb. After several attempts at printing some inserts, I finally did it. My printer was layer shifting in the y-axis. I think the problem actually is wet filament. Printing with carbon fiber nylon, it sucks moisture from the air. Didn't bother drying it, it's been kept in an airtight container with desiccant, but uh, obviously that was not enough. All that boiling water in the plastic was kind of foaming up and uh, it left like hills and stuff on the print surface, which the nozzle caught on and uh, and that caused it to shift layers. After tweaking some settings, we got there in the end though. I'll clean these up and uh, I'll show you how they're meant to be installed. This is meant to go in like this. You can see how this slit here fits the slide, creates clearance for that slide or that piece of the slide. Press fit plus some glue like that. A benefit of 3D printing this in uh, carbon fiber nylon versus uh, machining from uh, aluminium. It's flexible, means I can get a nice tight fit. The bore is tapered. You can see I made a fatter ring here, which fits like that. Almost 50 millimeters here and 48 at the slide. This will block the enricher passages on both sides. Doesn't matter, I don't think we need it. The kind of fuel we're running. That's not going anywhere. Maybe smooth out the edges with some more epoxy later. This will do for now. We'll have to wait for this to cure. And I need to start editing and get this video uploaded. See you next time.